and welcome to Nerdy on Real Des. And today we're going to be looking at some of the updates that happened in Niagara in the last couple of updates. Uh, this is mostly for anyone coming from Unreal 4.24 or, or earlier. Uh, I'm not going to look into the Chaos uh, Solver just yet, just because that's its own can of worms. But let's start things off. So we'll just go into FX, which uh, just once again, in 4.26, Niagara is no longer a plugin that you have to put in yourself. It comes included. Though if you go into settings plugins and go to FX, you can still enable extra little beta options as well as a Cascade to Niagara converter, though the Cascade to Niagara converter is still in beta. So we're going to go right click in Content Browser, FX, and we're just going to create a Niagara emitter. And let's go for hanging particulates. Now I always uh, name it with NE for Niagara Emitter, and we'll just say Tutorial. And yes, I accidentally left Capsock on. All right, so at first it might not seem there's too much different, maybe a couple little UI things. Um, for those wondering, if you go to Preview Scene Settings, uh, which I had it in a little tab over here, but if you don't see the tab, just go to Window, Preview Scene Settings, Environment, and then just unclick Show Environment, and you can change the darkness of the background so you can more easily see your effects. So with that out of the way, one of the first uh, notable differences will be in Emitter Update. You now have something called life cycle mode, which self or system. So self refers to just the emitter and system refers to the Niagara system. So if we went back to our content browser, made a Niagara system and then made, added in fountain and hanging particulates, Basically, the um, life cycle mode, it could either just be for the particular emitter or you could have it run based off of the system, which would be the whole Niagara system versus separate emitters. So say uh, if you wanted the hang particulates to die sooner than the fountain, you could do that. Uh, inactive response, uh, I believe there was something similar in earlier versions of Unreal. This just makes it more obvious. So complete, let particles finish, then kill emitter. Kill emitter and uh, particles die immediately. Continue. Emitter deactivates but doesn't die until the system does. Loop behavior, infinite once multiple. And also another interesting thing here, scalability, uh, system or self. So does the emitter scale based on itself or does it uh, scale versus based on the system? If you do it on self, it also has these little options. Enable distance culling, enable visibility culling, and reset age on awaking. So all sorts of interesting options here. Uh, spawn rate, you can see here, and group. So bring that back to 50. Some in other interesting differences in uh, initialize particle. The drop down menus are a bit different. So it's no longer the having to hunt down uniforms, uh, random uniform or whatnot for some of the drop downs that is. 
So this one is have random and the typical max and min or direct set. Just uh, one direct lifetime. Uh, color mode. Now they did some interesting things here. So we have direct set. It's just one color. And let's make this for our purposes nice deep purple. We're also going to drop down here to size so you can see what's going on with the colors. So we have that. We have random range. So this is ranging from black to white, but you can change it to blue to white, blue to pink. You can have all sorts of long. You can also link the color channels, which can create um, a few more differences in shades. Link RGBA. We also have random hue and saturation value. So we start with the deep purple and now it's changing based off of hue. Randomized saturation, which you can set, change the values. And alpha scale range. So we can literally do, so you can have a whole bunch of particles that are along the same color in a way, but different hue with, but different hues and shades of that color. Uh, I just personally think that's a really cool aspect. Or you can also do unset and the color mode is not based off of particle spawn and is instead based off of, say, scale color. Um, I also have box location. That's basically the same. Notice something interesting with sphere location. We now have um, distribution within the sphere. So uh, I'm actually going to bring back the colors just because I personally thought that was fun. But so random. We're going to turn off a uh, box location by just unchecking it. And now you can see it's randomly in a sphere. Make this a little bigger for y'all. All right. And then direct uniform. Which then you have to change uh, all these. Now you have these values to play with. And you can sort of see, see how it's starting to move around a bit. Also, if we go back to random, we now have surface only band thickness, which this means that the particles are now only on the surface of the sphere. Centered, outside. So this I'm sure will give a lot of you all sorts of ideas for what you can do with your Niagara systems. Uh, there are a few other uh, locations that let you do something like this. Uh, the Taurus location allowed you to do this in previous versions of Niagara. But yeah, there's of course various other um, differences though we still have curves for our scale sprite size and uh, scale color. But yeah, these are some of the more notable uh, differences for the latest version of Niagara. 
that you will come across in a majority of your FX when you're dealing with uh, particles. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Hello, and thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, uh, consider supporting me at my coffee, even dr following me there. I also have an art station page where I have a few prints as well as a store with 3D assets. And I also have a Redbubble with various designs ranging from more abstract, cartoony, and various queer flag related designs. Links in the description below. Thanks for watching.